Some of my favorite games of all time is the Sonic Adventure games. If you have watched my channel for a while, I think you have picked up on that. These are the games that introduced me to Sonic, and they're also the games that kept me coming back. To make it clear, if it wasn't already, I absolutely love these Sonic Adventure games. And as we all know, recently Sega announced that they were interested in doing remakes slash reboots for the Sonic franchise. And this got me thinking, they, they gotta be talking about Sonic Adventure, right? I mean, what other old Sonic games could they be talking about? They're not gonna remake the classic games in the Superstars engine because that, that's just unnecessary. We already got Sonic Origins. They wouldn't do that. So what do they mean by remaking older titles? Well, to me, it makes the most sense to remake the games that are highly regarded and barely ever receive ports, AKA the Sonic Adventure games. That's the only games I can think of unless they plan on remaking the Game Gear games. Please don't. Since I feel like there's a good chance that they might be talking about Sonic Adventure here, I thought it would be pretty fun to talk about what a Sonic Adventure remake could be. As someone who absolutely loves these games and have played these games like every year of my life, I feel like I have a lot to say on the subject. Basically, this video is just going to be me giving a pitch for my ideal Sonic Adventure remake. I will be talking about how I personally would remake these games. Now, to get this out of the way, I know you guys saw the title of the video, How to Remake Sonic Adventure Perfectly. What do you mean, Matthew? Doesn't that sound kind of pretentious? Well, yes, I, I'm very pretentious. How could you tell? All jokes aside, consider this video a discussion. I know we all have different visions for how the Sonic Adventure game should be remade, so obviously my perfect vision may be different from yours. And if you personally have your own ideas, or you think my ideas are bad, stupid, and dumb, then feel free to leave it in the comments down below. I will be reading what you guys have to say. Anyways, with that said, let's get into my thoughts, but first and foremost, I must clarify that this is a part one video. I will be specifically talking about how how I would remake the first Sonic Adventure game in this video. Then in the second video that I should be releasing sometime soon, I will be talking about the second Sonic Adventure game. So if you don't want to miss out on that, make sure to leave a like and absolutely punch that subscribe button. I almost hit my mic, that was tragic. But yeah, absolutely slam that subscribe button and hit the bell. Anyways, enough talking, let's get into it. Let's start off by conceptualizing the game. Let's talk about what it will actually be on its basis. Now, typically there's about two different types of remakes. There's the kind of remakes that closely follows the source material and the remake is just simply updating the graphics and a few new features. Games like the Spyro Trilogy and the Crash Trilogy have followed this style. Then there's another type of remake that is more like a reimagining. These games follow the source material, but very loosely. These kind of remakes tend to experiment more and turn it into its own thing. These are the games like the Resident Evil remakes or the Final Fantasy VII remake. For this video, I want to make it clear that this is going to be a reimagining. Now, I did make a video about two years ago where I talked about what I want from a Sonic Adventure remake. In that video, I talked about how I wanted it to be more one-to-one, -one, if anything. But not only is that video outdated, but I also don't agree with it anymore. So this video is going to be very different in that aspect because I don't want it to be one-to-one. -one. There's obviously some elements I want to be perfectly translated into this remake, but for the most part, I want this to be a reimagining. Kind of like the Resident Evil 4 remake. By the way, that game is amazing, everyone should go play it. The main reason why I want a reimagining is because I don't think the way Sonic Adventure was structured could survive in today's landscape. I personally have no problem with how Sonic Adventure was structured before, but regardless, no matter how good you make the big fishing gameplay, people will be upset that they are forced to play the Big's fishing gameplay. Simple as that. Nobody wants to fish. I hate to break it to you. So I really don't think the game should be designed that way anymore. Which yes, that means the playable characters will be handled differently in this remake. Don't worry, I will get into how I would handle the playable characters once I get to the gameplay segment of the video. I, I won't get rid of them entirely. However, something I can't really prevent is the voice actor changes. In my ideal vision, I would love to have all the old Sonic voice actors come back, but that's just not realistic. Especially since some people have gone older and they don't have the same voices they had when they recorded for this game. And unfortunately, some voice actors have passed away, being Dr. Robotnik voiced by Dean Bristow. He absolutely killed it with his performance, and honestly, he had a much more menacing take on Robotnik that I kinda miss from the older games. It's sad that he can't be featured in any kind of remake of this game without reusing lines, because he was a legend. 
Rest in peace. So yeah, if there was ever a modern day remake of Sonic Adventure, it'll probably feature the modern day voice cast. That might be a big deal for others and other people might not care. At the end of the day, it is what it is. As for anything else to get out of the way, I feel like the remake should be included in the same package as the Sonic Adventure 2 remake. I think that would be pro-consumer, and I also have some ideas for the remakes that cannot be fulfilled if they are not within the same package. I'll cover exactly what I mean by that later on in the video, but for now, let's just talk about what I want from the story. When it comes to the story, I want to keep it mostly the same except with a few dialogue edits. Sonic Adventure's story still holds up really well to this day. Not many plot holes, it's well paced, and it's just really cool and it covers a ton of interesting themes. And you know, I don't really want to mess with that, it has its own thing going and I don't think we should be fixing something that ain't broke. With that said, the main issues with the story of Sonic Adventure isn't actually the writing itself, but more so it's how the dialogue is written. The dialogue is cheesy, basic, and sometimes very cringy. The poor voice acting and terrible lip syncing does not help either. It results in cutscenes that look like this. Oh man, what happened to that emerald we just had? Uh, I guess Eggman's got one of them, but the other one's safe. That guy must be desperate. That means his two to our one, and that's not good. Come on, Sonic, we need to get busy. It's what Sonic Adventure is infamously known for, and with this remake, we need to kill that. I think a simple cutscene overall would be enough for people to realize that maybe Sonic Adventure's story is actually really good. We might finally get some appreciation for a Sonic story. Aside from that, the main big changes I'd make to the story is the role that the playable characters have. You see, to, to rip the band-aid off, none of the playable characters are required to beat the Sonic Adventure remake. I think you should be able to play Sonic, and only Sonic, from beginning to end. However, I still want to give the playable characters a unique spin. Throughout the game, as Sonic encounters the other characters, their stories will open up for you to play through. They will have the same levels as the original game with some improvements I'll get into later. At the end of every story, there will be a small cutscene of a mural depicting Tikal and Chaos Zero. Every time you complete a playable character's story, a Chao will appear in the mural next to Tikal and Chaos. This will greatly affect the ending of the game. By the end of the game, once you reach the Super Sonic boss fight, business is as per usual. Except now now there's three different endings. Ending number one. This is the ending in which the player doesn't beat the playable character's stories. In this ending, you get the normal boss fight to remade. You play as Super Sonic and you fight Perfect Chaos just like how you did in the original, but now in the remake. The one change that I will make is that Open Your Heart will play all the way to the end of the fight, like it always should have had. Aside from that, it's the exact same thing. The ending cutscene will show Sonic landing on a destroyed building next to Tails. He will leave his super form and the Chaos Emeralds will scatter far and wide. Tails will congratulate Sonic for defeating Chaos. He'll say something along the lines of, Woo, Sonic, you did it, wow. Sonic will seem a bit sad as he asks Tails if destroying Chaos was truly the only resolution that could have taken place. Tails will try to reassure Sonic by saying something along the lines of, Mr. Sonic, it was for the greater good, bro, or something like that, I don't know, I'm not good at dialogue. Sonic will shrug it off as he runs down the rooftops of the city, essentially mirroring the final shot of the original Sonic Adventure. I wanted to make the normal ending to the game informative, but not fulfilling. I know a lot of players are not going to play through the other stories, so this is my way of telling them what happens in Sonic Adventure without completely satisfying them. That way, if they really did enjoy the game, they can go get the true ending, and if they didn't, then they can move on to the next game. Since Chaos is barely mentioned in Sonic Adventure 2's story, any player that only beat the normal ending would already be caught up enough to move on to Sonic Adventure 2. The next game's story wouldn't be hard to understand with only the normal ending in mind. It may not be as satisfying as the other two endings I'll talk about in a moment, but it's enough. I also feel like this isn't a terrible ending either because I could definitely see some fans of the game believing that this was the best ending morally. Whether or not it's right to kill Chaos would definitely be a debate and I'm all for that because I love having moral discussions in regards to storytelling. We would have another widespread IDW comic debate. Doesn't that sound great? Anyways, time for ending 
ending number two. For this ending, you must complete all of the playable character's stories so that the Tikal and Chaos mural now has all of the Chow depicted. The final boss fights will continue as the typical final boss that you'd find in the normal ending. Except this time, upon defeating Perfect Chaos, he instead enters a second phase. During the cutscene of the second phase, Chaos gains some kind of armor, similar to the armor we see present in Sonic Generations Perfect Chaos. In the second phase, Chaos is in the middle of a playing field and Sonic is kinda just running around him. Think of the Golem boss fight from Sonic Adventure 2. In this section, Chaos is throwing all kinds of projectiles at you that you have to dodge. The tentacles will also come out of nowhere and attack you and you have to dodge them just like how you have to dodge the tentacles from the artificial Chaos from Sonic Adventure 2. Basically forcing the player to stay on his toes until Chaos begins charging energy. When he starts charging energy, Sonic can spin dash into him, thus leaving a crack on his armor. Repeat this three times and you'll enter the third phase. The third phase might be controversial, but I don't care. It's my game, my rules. It will consist of some quick time events. You see, I'm an enjoyer of quick time events. I, I don't see what the big deal is, and it makes dynamic battles memorable, and it's really cool. Go play the Naruto Ninja Storm games. You you'll see what I mean. Besides, it's going to be a short sequence. Sonic gets knocked back by Chaos after he breaks his armor, but he starts flying back towards him. As he's flying, Chaos will be throwing projectiles and surprise attacking you with tentacles in which the player has to quickly react through quick time events, until Sonic reaches Chaos in which he charges up for a second before boosting through Chaos and causing a massive blast or explosion if you will. In the final cutscene, Tikal calls out for Chaos after the explosion takes place. Nothing happens for a solid minute. That's until a puddle makes its way onto the bridge that she is standing on. The chow standing behind to call begin to make noises. Y you know, like the, the typical chow noises, the, the, the goo goo ga ga type beat. To which Chaos enters his zero form. He walks over and pats one of the chow on the head with his water arm. Then it cuts to Sonic standing on a rooftop, watching this in his super form. He suddenly drops out of his super form, causing the Chaos Emeralds to scatter far and wide once again. Tails mentions that it's amazing that Chaos was able to reunite with his Chow. Sonic agrees, as he tells Tails it's time to head out. It then once again mirrors the same ending to the normal ending, except this time Tails is running with Sonic. This is a pretty cool ending in my opinion, and I feel like it's a lot more satisfying than the normal ending. I also just wanted to see the perfect Chaos boss fight become a lot more ambitious because I'm a Sonic Unleashed fan, you guys should know this by now, I love quick time events and I love super long final battles. If your final boss isn't hype, then that's just kind of disappointing, you know? Anyways, for ending number three, it is the exact same ending as number two, except there is one small, tiny difference. In order to obtain ending number three, it'll require the player to S-rank every single stage in the game, even the playable character stages. By the way, yes, I believe the game should receive a ranking system in the remake. Anyways, this ending carries out the same way as ending number two, except once Sonic leaves his super form, the emeralds do not scatter far and wide. That is the only subtle difference. However, at the end of the credits, you unlock the ability to go supersonic within the hub worlds and the levels. I think it's best to lock supersonic behind getting all of the S ranks in the game because I feel like supersonic's just playing the game with a cheat code. You shouldn't have access to something as overpowered and amazing as supersonic until you have mastered the game. As for any of the other small changes to the story, I would would probably change around some of the to call cutscenes so that we can explain the events of the story without requiring the other optional stories. Anyways, let's move on to gameplay. Starting off gameplay, we need to talk about the most important thing to every Sonic game, and that is controls and level design. The Sonic Adventure games are some of the best controlling games I have ever played. Maybe not in the button mapping because Sonic Adventure 2 was a, a little bit rough on that department, but as in physics and overall air control, it's dang near perfect. Also, level design wise, these games are great. So in my hypothetical remake, I want the same levels from the original to return. 
And with that said, I believe if you are ever to remake these Sonic Adventure games, and especially if you plan on reusing the same levels, the game needs to control one-to-one -one with the original. I want it to be controlled almost identically, if possible. However, there is just one thing I want to change. I want it to be possible for Sonic to run through loops without the need for dash panels or scripting. And I also want him to be able to go up steep inclines without the need for dash panels. Dash panels were created solely to help automate and ensure the scripting of levels go smoothly. And while I do think they can still be helpful in a few areas of the game, I think for the most part, they should be removed. If Sonic doesn't have enough momentum to get through a loop, then the player will have to spin dash, just like the classic Sonic games. I don't think doing this would interrupt the pacing of the levels too much, because a lot of the levels in Sonic Adventure feels like they were already created with this philosophy in mind. They probably didn't want to use dash panels or scripted sequences as the only way for Sonic to get through a loop, but I don't think they had the knowledge on how to do that just yet. And then there was other moments where Sonic Team just slapped dash panels in areas of levels where it just didn't need it at all. Like seriously, for some of these levels, what was Sonic Team cooking? They just slapped dash panels there for no reason. Like Windy Valley, for example, this, this actually like upsets me. One of my favorite things to do in this level is spin dash and just roll down these steep slopes and it's just so much fun. But for some reason, Sonic Team just put dash panels here, and it's it's completely unnecessary. It's not helping with the scripted sequence, it's just there to boost the player forward, and it's stupid. Especially because the game already has momentum that would make you speed up regardless by going down the hill. What's even the point of these? These are just taking away your freedom to use momentum, and that, that the stupid, remove them. That's the main big change that I want to do to the levels in Sonic's controls. Make it possible for Sonic to go through a loop or up a steep incline without a random burst of speed or a dash panel. Make it more like the classic Sonic games. I feel like the original intention for Sonic Adventure was for it to be a perfect transition from classic to 3D gameplay anyway. And to be honest, that's my ideal vision of Sonic. Sonic Adventure 1 Sonic stages with less dash panels is what Sonic should be in my opinion. This remake would be a great way of returning to that. The final thing I would do to the Sonic gameplay is adding a ranking system. Unlike Sonic Unleashed and other ranking systems, I want Sonic Adventure 1's ranking system to be solely focused on how fast the player beats the level. And I don't want it to be something easy that any player can do in one try. I want it to be an absurd time requirement. Turn this game into Crash Bandicoot and make the players sweat to get that S rank. So I kind of want the ranking system to be a reward for players who go the extra mile to master every section of the stage. That would be fire. With that said, there's still five other playable characters to talk about, and while they are optional, they're still important to the game, so let's get into it. Let's start with Tails. For Tails gameplay, just make Sonic faster and make Robotnik faster. And that's about it. Despite Tails gameplay being a bit bland in concept, I do really like how Tails controls. If there ever was a Sonic Adventure 3, I would love for the Tails gameplay to return and just have fully original levels built around Tails' flight abilities. There is a ton of untapped potential there, and they, they, they gotta do something with it. For Knuckles, literally keep him the same. He's perfect either. There ain't really nothing wrong with him. He's just fun. Maybe give him a hard S rank that is very challenging. Aside from that, I already love the Knuckles gameplay and I don't think there's really anything wrong with it. For Amy, we need to make a few changes. Number one, make her movements flow a bit better. Specifically, make her acceleration faster. I really do love Amy's gameplay in Sonic Adventure. Very surprising, I know. But something I noticed that has always annoyed me is her acceleration. I love doing hammer flips with Amy. Except the problem is that you can't do it on the fly. You have to build up speed first, and honestly, I, I think it shouldn't be like that. This is a Sonic game, People are going to be impatient, especially when it comes to Amy. Just let us do the hammer flip on the fly, just like how Sonic can do the spin dash on the fly. That's what's so fun about Amy, except it takes so long to just accelerate fast enough to actually do a jump. I love doing the exploration and the hammer flip, so we definitely gotta fix this aspect of her character. E102 Gamma. I'd say keep the gameplay the same, although there's just... One change, that annoying screeching beep sound effect that plays constantly 
It needs to be removed. I, I swear, my, my ears hurt every time I play Gamma's section of the game. It's like a dog whistle. This is no fun hearing this. Aside from that, I love the gameplay, and it's actually pretty challenging to master the stages with Gamma, so by all means... We should go ham with the S rank. I want that S rank to be challenging. You know, up until this point, it made me remember that I really do enjoy the playable characters of the first Sonic Adventure game. So this is my appreciation for the playable characters of Sonic games. Anyways, uh, let's talk about Big. This is the most controversial part of Sonic Adventure and probably the hardest thing to work around when it comes to remaking the game. Because let's just be honest here, Big is not a good aspect of the game, and very few people actually found any type of enjoyment out of it. It's also really hard to put him back into the remake, because no matter how much you improve the fishing gameplay or mechanics, it's still fishing at the end of the day. Why would anyone in their right mind want to be forced to fish in a Sonic game? Nobody does. So here's my solution. J just take Big out of the game. Well, not completely, but just remove him as a playable character. I don't think it would matter anyway, considering that Big has almost zero impact on the story aside from being very charming. Which, yes, Big's story, despite it being very stupid, is charming. Regardless, I think Big should be an optional event in the game. How I would handle him is by placing wow. Big in each of the hub worlds of the game. Upon talking to him, you will enter the Sonic Frontiers fishing minigame, where you can fish for all kinds of new fish with the same mechanics and the same concept. Upon catching a fish, you get tokens that you can redeem for chaos drives or animals that you can use in the Chow Garden. That way, Big is not required for 100% completion, and instead, he just gives you an opportunity to grind for stuff that can be used in the Chow Garden. Bam, bada, boom! Honestly, Sega, this is a pretty good solution. It saves on development costs and... Honestly, it doesn't take much effort. Just port over the gameplay with a few differences, change the graphics, and, you know, change some of the animations, and you're good. But this is the only exception, all right? Don't, don't port over in anything else that is of a large quantity. I do not want to see Green Hill Zone back. I do not want to see Chemical Plants, Sky Sanctuary. I do not want to see major parts of a game being slapped into the remix. Or slapped into any Sonic games, for that matter. Just... Just uh, ma make something new. Now, with that said, I think that covers about everything in regards to the main gameplay of Sonic Adventure. So now, let's get into the extra content of the game. Well, I don't show up, don't One of the best aspects of the Sonic Adventure games is the endless replayability and also the extra content. You know what Sonic Adventure does that no other platformer in existence has done before? It's the Chow Garden. The Chow Garden is the single best post game to any platformer ever made. With the Chow Garden, there, there are endless, and I mean absolutely endless amount of variants for Chow to obtain and tons of different ways to raise them. But what ties it together is that in order for the player to progress in raising the Chow, the player has to replay the stages of the game and grind the levels. Thus creating this in-game loop where the player has a reason to constantly keep coming back to the game and replaying the levels. I'm serious. Name one platform that has a better post game than the Sonic Adventure games. There, there's just not a single one out there that, that I can think of personally. Sure, Mario games are really fun to 100%, but those always end eventually. Sonic Adventure never ends, and the content is so good. With that said, we need to do the Chow Garden some justice in these remakes, alright? We, we, gotta, we gotta do something cool with them, man. So, you know what? I, I decided that I was going to cook today. I was gonna cook and make the best Chow Garden system ever thought up. You remember at the beginning of the video where I talked about how I wanted both remakes to be on the same package? The main reason for that is because I want Sonic Adventure 1 and Sonic Adventure 2 to both share the same Chow Garden. What I mean by that is you get access to all of the Chow Gardens in both games. Despite playing Sonic Adventure 1, you will still be able to raise your Chow into Dark or Hero Chow, and that progress will carry over to Sonic Adventure 2 as well. Which means that you can grind either Sonic Adventure 1 or Sonic Adventure 2 to obtain Chaos Drives for your Chow. I wanted to do this because not only is the Chow Garden in Sonic Adventure 2 
better by far, but also because I always had this problem with the adventure games. I love the Chow Garden of Sonic Adventure 2, so I always grinded it. Except I always, in the back of my mind, wished I could grind Sonic Adventure 1 levels for the Chaos Drives instead. So why not combine the Chow Gardens for both games? So that I can play Sonic Adventure 1 and raise my Sonic Adventure 2 Chow. That just sounds... Perfect. That is that that is my game right there. The only change I would make is how the gardens are structured. In this remake, you would have to start out with the neutral garden from Sonic Adventure 2. And just like that game, if you were to raise a hero chow, you'll get the hero garden. And if you are to raise a dark chow, you'll get the dark garden. For the other gardens that are available in Sonic Adventure 1, I think you should be able to unlock them by buying them with rings. For example, if you want Eggman's Island as a garden, you would have to pay 10,000 and rings or something like that. Basically, make the player use the rings they gather from the levels to further expand their Chow Garden empire. Let's create Slime Rancher in Sonic Adventure. Th this will be sweet. For other changes to the Chow Garden, I would make all the gardens still pass time even if you're not playing in the Chow Garden. For example, if you're raising a running Dark Chow, Time will progress even when you're playing Speed Highway. Also, I'm not sure if this is already in Sonic Adventure, but regardless on if you restart your save or not, your Chow Garden save data should be separate from your main game data. That way you can restart the game and play through it again while not restarting your Chow Garden stuff. And you know, just from saying that, I'm starting to realize that there, there's just so much we can do with the Chow Garden. So much potential for this feature if it was ever to return. We should also add the ability to trade between other players and the ability to visit other players' gardens. Then finally, I would add special events. An example of this would be around Christmas time. There could be a special event where you have to beat Emerald Coast in an extremely short time limit. And in return, you get a special unique chow egg. It could be a chow with red and white stripes as a pattern on it. Stuff like that would keep the players coming back. And also, I feel like it would just be cool to own a limited time. I'm chow. Just don't let it become the CSGO weapon skin market because you, you know that 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 would be bad. Anyways, that's about it for the Chow Garden. I will not be talking about it as much in my Sonic Adventure 2 video because this Chow Garden also applies to that remake. I might say a few things about it, but nothing too crazy. Anyways, let's get into the conclusion of the video. Obviously, my ideas here are just my ideas. I tried to make it ambitious, faithful, and also realistic to what the Sonic Adventure remake could be. I love Sonic Adventure, so I just want the best for the remake if we ever get one. I know not everyone is going to agree with the decisions I made in my pitch, so I'm curious to see what you guys would do if you personally were making the Sonic Adventure remake. Who knows, maybe we can all learn a few things on what improvements and changes we can make to the game for its own benefit. We all love this game, so how would you personally do it? That's what I kind of want to leave off on. Mr. Sega, if you are watching this on your lunch break and you're gonna make the Sonic Adventure remakes, of course you can take my ideas free of charge, but also take a few tips from the fans. Some of us are a bit extreme and some of us may have some really bad ideas. But I also think a lot of us know Sonic very well and might be able to offer a few ideas that could truly benefit the game and make it the best it could be. Anyways, that's it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like and absolutely make out with that subscribe button and also hit the bell so you get notified for my future videos. I love you guys. I'll see you very soon. Peace out. My chill members are AHS, Makai Wilbert, Davron, Chum Zone Gaming, Old Thief, Francis, T218, Snix, Sonic Man 715, Sonic Pip 3, Monic, Arch XYZ, Snack Pigeon, Bananas, Junion Rings, Chip Chap Chop, The Squeaker Nerd, Super Shacks Boom, and Super Saiyan Sonic. Thank you all for supporting the channel. Make sure to click one of the end card screen videos here. Love you guys. My, my voice hurts from talking so long. Uh, peace out.